Hello and welcome back to revise GCSEhistory.co.uk, the number one place for your GCSE history revision. This is the fourth video in the topic, the Indian Wars, and in this video today we're going to be looking at specifically the Great Sioux War. Alright, so and that is the third and final Indian War you need to know about. So we're going to be looking at Great Sioux War, and there's a specific battle within the Great Sioux War that you need to know about. So it's still the Great Sioux War, but the battle you need to know about is the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And in this video today, we're going to be looking at generally at the Great Sioux War, but also a little bit at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And we're also going to do video 5 specifically on the Battle of the Little Bighorn too. Okay, let's make a start. So, in 1874, an expedition led by General Custer, who's this fellow here, to the Black Hills, broke the Fort Laramie Treaty. So, if you remember back to our previous video, the Fort Laramie Treaty said that uh, the Sioux, uh, the Great Sioux Reservation was Sioux lands and that no non-Indians were allowed to enter. The Black Hills were part of this Great Sioux Reservation. So, in 1874, this expedition led by Custer broke the Fort Laramie Treaty. The purpose of the expedition was to protect railway surveyors and to find out if gold was present in the Black Hills. General Custer reported that the area was rich in gold and this caused a vast influx of miners. So many miners travelled to the Black Hills to make a fortune once Custer had reported the area was rich in gold. The US Army were helpless to prevent miners from invading Sioux territory and breaking Fort Laramie Treaty. So we've got miners coming to mine Sioux lands and travelling across Sioux lands breaking Fort Laramie Treaty. So what happened next? So, the Great Sioux War. The government offered the Indians six million dollars uh, to buy the Black Hills but the Indians refused this because the Black Hills were sacred to them as the place where their nation began. Also, the Indians didn't like the idea that land could be bought and sold. They thought, they thought that the land was free, they were part of the land and not masters over it, so they refused the government offer. So, then, in December 1875, all Sioux Indians were ordered to return to the Great, whoops, ordered to return to the Great Sioux Reservation. And this was impossible to achieve because 7,000 Indians from various tribes were in the Powder River, uh, River County. In February 1876, the army were instructed to treat all Indians outside the reservation as hostile. So if Indians weren't to return to the reservations over the winter, they would be treated as hostile. And then General Sheridan thought up a three-pronged attack on the Sioux Indians who were camping at the Valley of the Little Bighorn. So then we get the Battle of the Little Bighorn happening. So, the Indians camping at the Valley of the Little Bighorn have, haven't followed uh, orders of the uh, US government and US Army by returning to the Great Sioux Reservation and are still out of the reservation. And the US Army have been instructed to treat all Indians outside the reservation as hostile. So we've got these Indians at the Valley of the Little Bighorn. So, as a result of General Sheridan's three-pronged attack, uh, the US Army suffered famous defeat to the Sioux Indians at the Battle of the Little Bighorn in July 1876. News of the defeat reached the rest of America on 4th of July 1876, and that's American Independence Day, and it was the 100th anniversary for independence. And although the Sioux Indians had won the battle, it was the US Army that had really won the war. So, it was a uh, short-term victory uh, for the Sioux Indians. They didn't win in the long term. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at why the Sioux Indians managed to defeat the US Army at Little Bighorn. Okay, so what happened after the Little Bighorn? So obviously the Sioux Indians defeat the US Army, but we've said that they only win in the short term. In the long term, it's the US Army that win. So the little bands of Indians that split up after Little Bighorn were followed and attacked during the autumn and winter of 1876 and 1877. 
Outnumbered, short of ammunition, food and general supplies, the small bands of Indians gave in and returned to their reservations. In 1877, Crazy Horse, which was a, who was a Sioux Indian leader, rode into the reservation and surrendered. And also in 1877, the day before Crazy Horse surrendered, Sitting Bull, another Sioux Indian leader, and his followers escaped over the border to Canada. So the armed resistance of the Sioux was over. That's it now. So this chart here just shows that uh, uh, the Indian victory at the Little Big Horn was really a short-term victory only. So Sitting Bull later escaped to Canada. Uh, Crazy Horse finally surrendered and was later murdered. Indians had to obey US laws. Indians across USA felt the army's anger. And all Indian reservations were placed under strict military control. And eventually, all Sioux Indians were rounded up and forced to return to the reservations. So the, de the defeat at the Little Big Horn was very much a short-term victory only. And as I've said in the next video, we're going to be looking at George. Uh, we're going to be looking at General Custer and why exactly the Indians were defeated at the Little Big Horn. We're going to be looking at that battle in a little more detail. But really, it was a short-term victory only. Okay, so we've covered all the knowledge we need to go through today's for today's video. Here are four quick questions based on the content of this video today. Pause the video here if you wanna, scribble down some answers, if not carry on watching, we'll simply discuss them together. Okay, so the answers. Question 1. Where was gold discovered in 1874? It was discovered in the Black Hills. Question 2. What treaty did miners break when they travelled to the gold mining areas? They broke the Fort Laramie treaty question three in december 1875 what were all sioux indians ordered to do they were ordered to return to their reservations and any sioux that didn't return to their reservations would be treated as hostile but obviously that was impossible because many were camping in the powder river county and finally the answer to question four why did the sioux indians return to their reservations after the little bighorn they were short of uh, of supplies. They were desperate, quite rather desperate, really, and they were massively outnumbered. Two. All right. So there are the answers to these four questions. Thanks for watching this video today. I do hope you found it useful. The next video is going to be on General Custer and specifically the Battle of the Little Bighorn. What happened? Why were they defeated? Thanks for watching this video today. Good luck with your studies. See you guys soon.